it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers and we're zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question and that is how to identify the red flags of a uh, psychopath particularly when they tell you what you want to hear um, when we talk about a um, a psychopath um, we are really talking about someone who is devoid of emotion. They're really devoid of feeling. They're devoid of the startle response, the fear response. And they can't really identify it in others. Um, it gives them a great ability to do things that most people could not do. Uh, risky behaviors, uh, high promiscuity, um, a, a tendency to become very... Dis, uh, dis uh, uncomfortable when they are, are bored. They have a high sensitivity to being bored. So they want to keep very highly stimulated. And this can play out in a number of different ways, particularly, you know, telling others what they want to hear. And so when, you know, studies have been done and then show the brain scans of people who have been psychopathic, uh, those who have been incarcerated, uh, particularly have been the populations of study and looking at, uh, because it's very captive, uh, uh, ca uh, a captive population, but they show that there are certain inactivity in areas of the brain, uh, particularly the amygdala, uh, which is uh, the, the fear center. So they don't really process fear um, and they don't, so it, there's an inactivity there. There's a, a, a different activity or a different perspective or assessment that they have of that emotion and also they have a high sensitivity uh, to the dopamine so their brain will uh, release or excrete um, and be sensitive five times more sensitive to dopamine which is the reward neurotransmitter um, that neurochemical is the reward feeling so when you feel good you feel um, you know, you, you feel like you want to repeat something like the dopamine response. For example, if you were to win at a slot machine and you're like excited and the coins are all pouring out, that is the dopamine response. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, you're dopamine. It's a feel good thing. You're excited. You're exhilarated. You know, you're on the win. So the psychopath is particularly sensitive to that five times more sensitive. So this, if you can imagine that sensitivity combined with a um, amygdala depletion, which means they don't have a fear response, as well as uh, studies have been shown a high testosterone, which is the aggression hormone, um, and also sort of a disconnect and an inactivity between the prefrontal cortex, which is the judgment center, um, and sort of your higher thinking or higher order, which allows you to learn morals, right from wrong, and then also kind of learn things. Um, there's a, a sort of disconnect between those areas of the brain, if you will. Yet there's other areas that are highly connective, and these people can be highly intelligent, highly productive, and seem apparently normal. Yet underneath the surface, you know, within this personality or antisocial personality disorder, however you want to phrase it, um, this person then learns very quickly in their teenage years that they're different. I mean, they, they know, um, the, a psychopath will tell you there's something different about them in the way that they communicate and relate to others. So they don't have that same bond, that oxytocin bond of feel good or connectedness with people. They, they just don't have it. Um, they process things differently. They process relationships differently. Uh, people have uh, studied in uh, Snakes in Suits, Dr. Robert Hare, one of the four, the premier uh, researchers and sci scientists and psychologists out of Canada, which looks at um, the study of inmates and then the psychopathic population. In other words, the people who are cold blooded, you know, they have ice running through their veins and they can do horrific things and they don't feel any regret. They don't feel any remorse. They have no conscience. So a conscience goes, you know what? I should not do that. That would be wrong. So that's your voice of reason. So that's your morality. That's your, you know, your, your brain, your higher consciousness, all this sort of highly, you know, electrical um, activity. 
which charges through your your body and you know helps you to make decisions and choices um this is uh really it, it causes them to then realize that they don't sort of have that lovey-dovey uh sort of you know i want to hold hands let's have a hot chocolate let's have a wine whatever it is you know for a genuine attraction and relatedness they they don't have that neurochemically going on they've got these other things going on which we've just mentioned and so they very quickly realize that if they want to fit in you know and not be have people go what you know what was that like i don't get you you know these people have as viewers so aptly stated they have a, a desire to win they want to have power and control over others so that's their sort of feel-good focus when it comes to a psychopath so but oftentimes they also have a combined sort of pleasure with being different and seeing others sort of give it up to them whether it's high promiscuity high arousal getting people addicted getting people sort of bought into their illusion which is very very lethal um in other words, they're going to take whatever life force they can from you in order to keep their situation going. It's very astringent. It's very caustic, um, meaning they will also distort the words and communication with which they communicate to other people. They don't have abstract knowledge, um, and not abstract knowledge, but they don't have sort of abstract meanings such as, you know, liberty, freedom, um, love, these sort of abstract emotions. So they don't get that, like, you know, honor, um, courage, um, you know, these sort of uh, elusive abstract qualities, which you might feel a sort of patriotism, um, things that are, are represented to you, you know, a sort of connection do you see what i'm saying where you look up to things or you have this emotional significance nostalgia um you know pride of your heritage so you know these sort of things are not there they're not connected within this type of individual but they can be highly intellectual um but yet they realize early on that they have to mimic and they have to you know tell people what they want to hear so that they'll miss their behaviors, they'll miss what's going on. In other words, you know, they might, you know, exaggerate the startle response. You know, everybody else is watching a movie and just, you know, there's big loud noises and they're, you know, they're just kind of watching it. You might see, you know, someone who is psychopathic mimicking, oh, you know, a startle response because they so lack a startle response that they want people to believe that they have a high startle response. Um, and so, uh, ah, you know, and like, you're like, why are you overreacting? That is, you know, a, 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 an example of someone who might be telling you what you want to hear. So you'll think, oh, this person's highly sensitive. You know, they, they're hard, you know, so they're, they're kind of manipulating you to see and perceive them and then not look at their other behaviors which are incongruous with telling you what you want to hear. Um, you know, calling you, you know, you're the most beautiful man. Um, you're the most beautiful woman. Um, you're the strongest, you know, boldest, uh, you know, you're my uh, rock. I mean, a lot of people who are truly in love will say that, but for a psychopath, they might specifically do things to manipulate you into feeling like you're the biggest man, you're the provider, you know, you've got this masculinity, um, and you're, you know, you can do, you know, you can do, you can get greasy, you can do the dirty work, um, you know, and you're a provider, you're such a great provider, like all the things that a man would want to hear, and they can, you know, do that and saying, you know, this is, man, you're so good at this man's work, um, you know, and they might be, trying to get you to feel masculine, yet then they're um, demasculating you by other things that they say. You know, um, the, the cut, the put downs, you know, the emasculating comments, um, you know, that, you know, you don't, uh, you know, just uh, over the little things, causing you to sweat the little things. Um, 
whatever it is that they're trying to target you for and then take you down underneath the knee. Um, other things that they're telling you what you want to hear, uh, that you, um, you know, that you're their uh, sweet pea. Um, in other words, sort of objectifying you. Uh, studies Dr. Robert Harris stated that the psychopath literally sees others as objects. Um, they, they're, the people are, have no different qualities than an object or like a book or like an, uh, a toaster. Like it's just another item in the environment. So it's really scary. In fact, that's really pretty flipped out. And I thank God that I'm a person of empathy. But psychopaths feel that this callousness or this numbness or this lack of feeling give their, you know, like a superpower to them. So a psychopath will oftentimes say that it's very intellectualized. So they'll have a very intellectualized emotion. Um, they'll, they'll tell you what you want to hear. You know, do you want to go sit by the garden? Um, you know, do you want to go sit, you know, by this uh, lovely bay? And, and you, you'd be like, wow, you know, this person is so sensitive. You know, how did they know that I would like this? You know, and then, you know, you're, they take you there and so they melt you down or break you down. But meanwhile, you know, they're, they're texting their other relationship. You know, they have you in the sack, so to speak. They have you bagged. You know, you're one and done. Um, so it can be a very, uh, very uh, lethal and heartbreaking thing. It takes people months and years to get over sort of the betrayal and having, t you know, and the psychopath will tell you, you know, I, I tell you what you want to hear or I tell them what they want to hear. They will unequivocally admit to that. Um, but they will also give you uh, clues that they're a little bit off. Like they might say something like, you know, I'm dangerous or I'm, I've got ice water running through my veins or I really don't care about this. There was recently something in the news here. In fact, it's just, I don't even want to bring politics into it, but Melania Trump, um, the first lady of the United States was wearing a jacket that said, you know, I don't care, do you? I mean, it's just a really sort of disingenuous, uh, you know, just a really faux pas. And we're not doing any political, but it's just like, you know, things that make you go, what? You know, it's just things that would flip your mind how these people feel that are sort of anti-humanity, um, anti-humane. Um, and so, you know, but telling people what they want to hear, um, that, you know, like calling them by their nickname, um, calling you honey, sweet pea, um, bunny, um, you know, boo-boo, whatever they're calling you, Booper. I mean, they might call you by a nickname all the time, but they never sort of call you by your name. In other words, you don't ever, you, you know, you feel sort of um, like their pet. And this is not always good. In true love, now that's a very sweet, beautiful thing. We're talking about psychopaths who are telling you what you want to hear so they can get you off track and then mixed up in having this sort of psychological chaos, engineered chaos, where they're really um, in a very calculated and premeditated way getting you off track so that you're focusing on something that they want. They sort of take you over and cause you to want to pay attention to specific things in a different way. So it doesn't really sort of, it takes you out of your element. So that's what's so very um, disempowering is um, they're doing this on a very um, manipulative manner, a very pre-calculated manner, uh, very, uh, very, um, it's a discipline that they will engage in because they know if they, they just can't be themselves. They, they can't just, uh, be lack, have, have a lack of, um, emotion. They can't, so they have to kind of sort of pretend like they have this excessive emotion. Um, they might, you know, they, they'll push your buttons. They'll scope you out. They'll see what your weaknesses are. They'll see where you need, you know, what your needs are. And then they'll, they're very adept at seeing people's needs. So they're able to sort of have like an x-ray vision, if you will, to see who are the low hanging fruit, who they can capitalize on and sort of, you know, hone in on and then pull out of their element and begin to 
sort of target them, uh, groom them for their their target, you know, for their prey. So they'll they'll tell people what they want to hear, so they'll feel like they've just met their their love bombing. They've met their knight in shining armor, their woman on a stallion, whatever it is that their image or fantasy is. All of a sudden, wow, bingo! It's sort of like a bingo feeling, but that's different from true love because true love. It's not about, you know, trying to harm the other person and calculatedly sort of set them up for failure and be coercive or um, abusive. Um, and so, you know, the other problem is, is that the psychopath oftentimes does not learn. So even if you have a big argument over something and you sort of try to make amends and you're still sort of feeling the hurt and you go back and they've completely forgotten it and they're, they just don't have an emotion, they don't, they don't have a, there's a problem with them, like emotional learning. In other words, that most people would hold on to something emotionally. They're they just they they let it go. It it doesn't stay. It doesn't sit with them. Um, so that's why they're kind of they hover back and they come back and you're like, what? Like, don't you remember the fight that we had? Don't you remember? You know, we you know this did not work. And then they come back and then it's because they oftentimes they don't have this emotional learning. Um, they, they don't have this memory of of fights. They're just like, well, we had this fight, and so do you do you want to do this again? I mean, it's like they don't really remember, and it's very, it's very, very odd and very scary when you see that because you realize, you know, you're not dealing with your typical human. It's you're dealing with um, a, a, a different sort of subset, if you will, of this intraspecies predator. So they'll tell you what you want to hear in order to groom you, to break you down, to get you under their, you know, talons, under their tentacles, under their uh, puppetry, if you will. Um, and they'll get you to jump, spin, uh, wag your tail, whatever it is. They, they, it's a very sort of manipulative and controlling thing when you get addicted. And so people become addicted oftentimes to this aspect of them. They want to hear something from this person. There's a certain way that they make them feel by the things that they tell them. And so the psychopath will tell you that they will observe and they'll observe what true couples are into. So they'll say, wow, like, look how that, you know, they want to share some hot chocolate and like look at art or whatever it is or have, you know, some champagne and look at art. They'll, you know, kind of... Um, or like, let's say they want to like go out to a steakhouse and they'll sort of observe what others are interested in and then they'll mimic it. So in other words, it's not really coming from within them. There's no, you know, decision making together. It's what the psychopath will then observe what other couples are interested in. And we're kind of focusing in on the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the couple, uh, relationship of, um, this uh, psychopath, but they're in, in business, in this, in your community, your neighbors, etc., your family. But for example, they will see, you know, that they do this and then they'll, it's not, it's not even different than just like learning, like, oh, that's what you do. Like, let's go along and play bingo. Like, because they think it would be fun. They observe it because they want to tell people what they want to hear and then take them and then be, conduct the behaviors to get them, you know, completely saturated and addicted. Um, and so they'll take them to these events, which the psychopath doesn't really um, feel that they get a reward out of. It's more the reward of um, manipulating others. It's more the reward of having power over others, duplicitous and conning of others, that they get a um, sort of sick uh, reward from. And then you know, knowing that, that they're then turning around and behaving completely differently in another relationship or they've got, you know, a duplicitous life, a double life, a triple life. You know, you hear about these things in the news, but that is how um, a psychopath will then sort of tell you what you want to hear. Um, what are some other quick examples before we, we wrap it up? Um, uh, bear with me one moment. I'm just, uh, I had a very good example, um, where, you know, they're, they're talking in a positive way, yet they're destructive in another way. Um, 
you know, it's just they're, they're, when you learn, when, you, when you're no longer addicted and you look at their actual actions and the things that they're actually doing on a factual basis, then you kind of know, you're able to see through the fog, the fear, obligation, and guilt that is part of the addiction. And you're able to see their behaviors and you're able to see the mismatch. So you're no longer caught up in hearing what you want to hear because that's part of staying in the psychopathic relationship is that people stay in it because they want to continue what they want to hear. It's so very painful for them to emerge from that um, that sort of addiction um, and that um, and we will talk about the ad addiction so in other words there would be there becomes an obsession with this person because they're so different and it makes them feel so good you know what you're what you're what you're experiencing is this person who's highly arousing of you um, highly you know stimulating they have very high energy oftentimes is because they have a high propensity to a need of stimulation because they, they are very uncomfortable with boredom or really kind of sort of being at peace, um, being in prayer, um, being in self-reflection. Um, they don't, they don't have a self-reflection, I believe, really going on. Um, that's what part of this boredom is like. They need high stimulation. And so part of this, you know, you'll, you'll realize that they, um, there's nothing really sort of sticks. And so, you know, when you're sort of emerging and exposing them, you'll realize that they were just placating you. They were pacifying you. They were telling you what you wanted to hear. And yet you can have all these wonderful qualities.